You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. A traditional Italian classic for you here, spaghetti aglio e olio. And this is the first spaghetti dish I've made for ages as I just couldn't face anything Italian after the 2020 or 2021 European Football Championship final. And I'm going to make sure that I give you a fully authentic version of spaghetti aglio e olio today. No twists or fancy alternative ingredients. And I'm just chopping six cloves of garlic very, very thinly here. And as you can see, I'm already in trouble now because I'm using curly parsley instead of the Italian flat leaf version. But even though I'm using the wrong parsley, I'm not going to throw these stalks away because they're going to go in this dish and I'm chopping them very finely and they'll give a nice flavour to our base. And they won't be bitter like I was for ages after the biggest football match of my life. But I didn't let the bitterness get to me. I can handle epic disappointment, what with having a face like a bag of smashed crabs and everything. And I'm chopping this parsley up smashing here because we want to have all of our ingredients chopped before we put the pasta on ideally. And I'm salting the water right now and it wants to be very generously salted for this dish. So I could have used all the salty tears I've cried since the Euro final to make this and it would have been just as tasty. I'm using around 250 grams of dried pasta here and that's about right for two people I would say. And I tried to do the pasta twist thing there so the spaghetti was all spread out but it didn't quite work out. And now I'm going into a gently warming pan with 75 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil and make sure that heat is low. Because if you overcook your parsley stalks and thinly chopped garlic, that Giorgio Chiellini might come round to your house and drag you to the ground by your throat. And if you find that your pan's getting a little bit out of control, like my emotions sometimes do, put a bit of that pasta water in to calm its temper so it doesn't smash the television in anger. So some people had chilli at this point, and some whack jobs even go in with anchovies, so if that's your preference, do that now too. But in my humble opinion, if you like to put anchovies in this dish, you're probably the type of person that would like to put a flare up your bottom. But whatever you do before you put the pasta in, you want to put a ladle of pasta water in there, and then it's time to bring our pasta off the bench and into the game. When it's about 90% cooked, or very al dente, we're going to cook it a little longer with our oil and garlic, and the spaghetti will continue to soften and absorb some of the liquid in our pan here. And you can crank up the heat now if you like and give this a really good stir around so that that oil and water and garlic and parsley stalk formation begin to emulsify around that pasta. And if you get the feeling that the pan has gone a bit dry, add a little bit more of the pasta water in there to keep it lubricated before bringing our chopped parsley on for the last couple of minutes. But don't worry, it's not just being brought on to take a penalty. It's going to play a major role in proceedings. And let's hope it doesn't get any abuse of small-minded anonymous keyboard warriors there. And I'm just going to take a taste at this point. And that is as tasty as Roberto Mancini in his Armani suit, that. But I'm still going to add a little bit more salt and pepper to it before I serve it up. And you can adjust the seasoning to suit your tastes here. And here it is, coming in now, and all that's left to do is to say congratulations to Italy for having some fantastic cuisine and a fantastic football team. And I hope that after the next major football tournament, I'll be making roast beef and Yorkshire puddings and talking about how handsome Gareth Southgate is. And that's full time for this video, so thanks for watching, food fans. Sarah.